Today we're at Myallo, north of Mossman, with fourth generation cane farmer Gerard Puglisi at this tranquil rainforest creek on his property. The Puglisi family has grown cane in this spectacular part of Queensland for 90 years and their respect and love for the natural environment is obvious. Even before the commencement of the Reef Rescue Program, which is now known as the Australian Government Reef Program, the family was embracing new techniques aimed at improving the quality of the water leaving their farm and entering the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. Another benefit of Reef Rescue is that all the farmers, I think every farmer in the whole industry would want to protect their backyard, like most of them are fishermen or most of them have got rivers and streams running through their property. So by being able to adopt a lot of these um, new farming practices as a benefit of reef rescue, it's enabled us to help beautify these natural wonders that we've got in our backyard. This is one of Australia's highest rainfall regions and Gerard believes a minimal till approach to farming makes sense, so runoff of sediment, nutrients and herbicides is significantly reduced. The Australian Government Reef Program is making it possible for cane growers in the Mossman district and elsewhere to upgrade their equipment to maintain the highest environmental standards and safeguard that coral reef wonderland that lies just off the coast. One example of the program in action is this fertiliser box and stool splitter, which was in use on the Puglisi farm even before the advent of Reef Rescue. This is a steel splitter, Gesna steel splitter fertiliser box, stainless steel. It was one of the first ones in the Mossman area. We already had this when, um, before Reef Rescue was out, so we were probably one of the pioneers in the industry for going, well, in Mossman anyway, for going to the steel splitters. But through Reef Rescue, we were able to get the double disc opener attachment to it, which further re reduces our soil disturbance. So we've got less, before it previously had a ripper leg, it used to open the soil up probably a bit more than what the double disc openers do and this also covers the soil back up and packs it so there's rest, less chance of any volatilisation of any soil moving even though it is plant, does is subsurface but there's absolutely no chance now where it can get volatilisation. In keeping with the minimal till farming philosophy that centres on reducing soil disturbance, Puglisi farming was successful in achieving reef rescue funding for a two-part project to design and construct a zonal rotary hoe and equip one of their farm tractors with GPS technology. Introducing a controlled traffic approach to machinery movements coupled with a shift to a 1.8 metre wide row spacing has brought numerous on-farm gains. We've now completely been right through our farm and all our farms 100% GPS at our wider row spacings so it helps now with our all our fertiliser applications just go in exactly the same spot. Uh, we're reducing our compaction by the harvest run in exactly the same spot. And also our chemicals, we're not getting any overlap. We're getting all our chemicals and placement plant to spot on. Uh, we've gone to the Ag Guide farm scan uh, GPS system, which has enabled us to get two centimetre accuracy from one end to the other. We operate on a community base station, which is run by Mossman Ag Services. They do the, the base station and we it's a community base station that we can all, all use. Okay, this machine here is our zonal rotary hoe, which we got some money from Reef Rescue to modify. It a, was a standard Howard 90 inch rotary hoe, which we've modified to become a zonal rotary hoe. We've put this front frame on the, on the front to have a deep rip where, our, where um, the soil is going to be going, where the, the plants can actually be planted, and the mower boards actually push up the dirt to leave a bit of a mound that we plant into the mound. Um, by, by using this implement um, attached to a tractor that's fitted with a GPS has enabled us to uh, reduce our compaction and reduce our fuel usage. So it's saving us money over the time. We need a smaller tractor to, to pull this so we don't need to invest in bigger tractors. And by matching it to the row spacings of the harvester, is, um, it led to better efficiencies. The harvester now doesn't have to run over the stool so we get less damage in the future so we get more money which is more profitable. Us. With two Australian Government Reef Program projects already making a very real difference in preventing sediment and nutrient runoff, it makes sense to be ticking the third water quality box too, and this is preventing herbicide runoff. Puglisi Farming is achieving that objective by modifying its high rise sprayer, not just to cope with wider row spacings, but to minimise the farm's use of residual sprays and instead focus on the knockdown of weeds using a hooded sprayer attachment. 
hooded or shielded sprayers allow farmers to spray the inter-row spacing with non-residual knockdown chemicals, such as glyphosate, without damaging the cane crop. Fitting the hooded sprays to our, to our high clearance tractors has enabled us to reduce their use of residual chemicals and go more down to knockdown chemicals, which is more of a cost savings for us and better for the environment. Uh, these, we've made these so they can move from side to side, which enables them to track easier through the, through the soil profile. But now that we've moved the GPS, they do, um, they track spot on right behind the, behind the wheels, behind the wheel tracks. Helping Jared and his family to create one of the cane farms of the future is the team at Mossman Agricultural Services, which is jointly funded by local growers and the miller. And the latest venture is a trial of liquid fertiliser that could bring further productivity gains. The liquid fertiliser is being combined with fungicide during planting. If the trial is successful, it could improve the speed and efficiency of fertiliser application. We're looking at the planter here where we've got fertiliser boxes on both sides of the planter for granular fertilisers. We're looking at changing over from granular fertilisers to, to liquid fertilisers and getting rid of these fertiliser boxes. Uh, there's advantages there for efficiencies at planting and, um, and for workplace health and safety where we don't have to handle those big bags when, at planting time. You know, when, when, and it's very dangerous. It's a rushed operation uh, trying to put fertiliser into those. It's difficult and can be dangerous. The gains that we can expect with using the uh, liquid fertilisers over the uh, uh, over the granules is probably in the productivity gains are going to be in time. Uh, you know, there's talk that we might be able to plant two or three hectares more a day uh, using this rather than and, and and not have that. Also, as I said before, those big bags hanging over the top of us where they could drop on top of somebody. Uh, there's probably no, uh, we're not looking at gains in, in yields, we're looking at gains in efficiencies. Mossman Agricultural Services also assists growers by providing stocks of disease-free seed cane, undertaking soil testing and providing general agronomy advice. That includes assisting growers with funding applications under the Australian Government Reef Program and helping to administer the Smart Cane BMP project. Every year we um, put in applications for growers so that they can gain um, <coughs> new machinery that's for improving water quality like a stool splitter, um, spray rigs. Uh, we had a few creative ones this year. We had some drainage works get through. So it's good. anything that improves water quality is really important to us. And we also run the Smart Cane program for the Mossman area. We're rolling that out. We've actually just reached our magic number. So we've just got to get people through and accredited. It's an important process because we really value that growers are doing the right thing and we want them to be advertised in the right way. And we want them also to be able to gain accreditation for the things that they're doing right because most of the time, they do the right thing because it's beneficial to them. It's not just about having the tick. But Jared Puglisi isn't satisfied just doing the right thing as a grower. He wants to tell anyone he'll visit. So his passion for sugar is extending into tourism and educating visitors to the Daintree region. Sweet Farm Tours is managed by Jared's wife Therese, giving visitors a close up look at cocoa trees and the story of how the pods are extracted and dried to make chocolate and of course the working cane farm. We diversified into cocoa back in 2006 and we're the first Australian origin chocolate um, well, that go right through from estate to plate uh, through Daintree Estates and through that we were getting one or two sort of people that would come to the farm and want to have a look at our cocoa estate so we're taking them up there then people would want to have a look at and had were interested about the sugar industry and they didn't know a lot so we thought well we may as well do the start up a business and try and do that offer the offer somewhere like in the Daintree region a lot of people come to have a look at the rainforest and have a look at crocodiles but there's not really anything else that they can do here so we're giving them like another option that they can have a look at so farm tours is unique so we started our business sweet farm tours because we see a need to um, try and publicize the con concentrate on the positives that the sugar industry is doing uh, there's a lot of good news stories about the industry that don't always get out there and um, through our cocoa business, we've also do do tours through that, and we thought we'd branch out on that and maybe do sugar and cocoa because when we do our cocoa tours, we get a lot of questions about the sugar industry. Best of all, the tour experience for many people from all over the world is meeting the real hard-working farmers. 
who form the backbone of Queensland's sugar industry. Farmers like Gerard Puglisi, who care deeply about the place they call home. Well, this is a creek that runs through the middle of our property and my kids and I've, even when I was small I used to come swimming down here all the time. So it's something that I don't want to pollute to. We're right at the top of the top of the last farm at the top of the hill, so we don't want to be cause any fertilizer and all the inputs are very expensive. And we don't want to waste them either, so we want to use them to the best best that we can. So we just, um, like I said, I think every farmer in the whole industry would want to protect the land, and that's what we, our main aim is.